Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. It is time once again for Emerald City Comic Con. Emerald City Comic Con has been bouncing a lot a bunch because of COVID postponements and stuff. So we had one last December, which if you want to go check out that video, I will link that down below. Unless it is now in the future. And it's time for another Emerald City Comic Con. And the next one's going to be in March. So we're all over the place, but I am all set for a really, really fun extended weekend heading up there. Uh, I only live about like 35 minutes away, luckily, so that's why I'm at home. But I am attending three out of the four days this weekend. Today is Friday. I'll also be going Saturday and Sunday, and I'm having an American Girl weekend of cosplay. So today is obviously Samantha in her midi dress, and I am very excited to go wear this up there. Got my my lovely dark hair and my super super cute sailor dress and whistle and everything and I am just so excited to go spend the whole weekend as basically a child. I have to admit that's one of the things I like about the 1830s is like you can just be silly and childish and whatever and yeah so like kid based cosplays and costumes are just really freaking fun. So hopefully I will have a wonderful time, but of course I am bringing you guys along with me and we're gonna go watch a bunch of panels, see a bunch of cosplay, look at all of the booths, just have a wonderful time. So let's head out. We're here at Comic-Con. Here's Samantha, here's my outfit. Unfortunately, it was a very tight parking garage and I have already gotten dirt all over my white dress. So that's fun. I knew it was a risk, but hopefully it will come out later. Oh, wearing white, it's not for the faint of heart. Anyway, we are going to go have a fun time. We're taking some pictures right now here in Freeway Park and then we're gonna go have a fun time inside and I will show you Artist Sally.
wishes for. Question number six. Why doesn't Dr. Facilier transform into Naveen's doppelganger himself? fun first full day at Emerald City Comic Con. We will be back tomorrow and I will be wearing a Kirsten and have Kirsten along with me instead of Samantha. So, bye Samantha. It's time for day two of Comic Con and obviously I'm Kirsten today. I still love this outfit. I think it's my favorite of the American Girl outfits. And so I'm really, really excited to wear this today. I'm also really curious to see like which of the outfits are going to be the most recognizable. I did actually have quite a bunch of people yesterday who knew who I was. I think even besides the fact that I was holding Samantha like this the whole day, I think there were people who were seeing me that weren't necessarily seeing Samantha. So that was cool. And I feel like Kirsten is maybe even more iconic. So yeah, we'll see how this plays. The reason that I haven't been showing you Rachel that much, by the way, is because she's not dressed up in cosplay. So I'm a Hufflepuff. She's a Hufflepuff today, and you were Legends of the Hidden Temple yeah. yesterday, right? Yeah, Legends of the Hidden Temple t-shirt yesterday. So that is why you see her sometimes, but not all the times, because I'm mostly showing cosplay, because I feel like that's what you guys want to see. Let me know if, like, you want to see other stuff, and for next Comic-Con, I'll show you even more other stuff. But anyway, we are gonna go head out right now so that we can go try to catch the Our Flag Means Death panel. A couple of, uh, I think three of the cast members from that show are going to be at Comic-Con doing a panel. So let's head out the door. We're here, we're headed to the panel in just a minute. Just it doesn't matter. Just be who you are and don't worry about it. 
know? Like, I was such a, like, uh, similar to, I mean, in a very different way to Mischief, but I felt so different growing up, and I grew up in, like, a very small working-class town in England, and, like, that didn't necessarily, it's different now, but at the time it didn't necessarily celebrate and support difference. Um, so I grew up feeling like such a freak, but something happened, I don't know if it's just like amazing parents or whatever, but like I just had these like blinkers on where I was like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get out of here, you know, whatever. Um, and I think, I would just say like, keep going, don't let anyone stand in your way. The idea particularly like, to be adults, like bad teachers at school or whatever, I don't know, just don't let any of that like blinkers on, laser focus, keep going bitch, that's what I'd say. Time for a voiceover panel. and the creatures of the forest are fighting back. So we have Darth Vader, Force Chucky, Professor on bridge. We have Fluffy about to eat a protocol droid, get a horrible case of indigestion. Prop just knocked down an ATST walker and is beating on him with his club. A group of students and a squad of stormtroopers are shooting each other with blasters and wands. We've got Emperor Palpatine and a squad of Royal Guard are over here fighting Professor Snape, Dumbledore, Kingsley, and Moody, the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, Professor Snape's used a uh, abracadabra spell on one of the Royal Guards. He's about to disappear as soon as it gets there. You got an astromech trying to fix the Weasley flying car. You have Aragoth, his mate, and all of his children coming out of the spider cave to help out. And a group of stormtroopers and uh, Inferno Squadron are trying to shoot him back into the cave. You got a squad of uh, speeder scouts on uh, bikes flying through the forest with a bunch of students flying on their brooms, shooting each other with wands.
Like before, I will fight the fight and win the war. For your love, for your praise. Da -da -da. Well, I have just tried for the third time to sign up for tomorrow's cosplay competition for Felicity, and the right people are never at the table when I need them to be, so I guess I won't be entering her into the cosplay competition, which is probably just fine. So I am just waiting for Emily and Rachel and Gabe to find me now, and we're gonna go head over to the Crown Championships of cosplay, which is what I entered Cinderella in last time, but this time I'm just gonna be an audience member, which is, you know, nice and stress-free. So I will show you that competition shortly. I'll come this way. Okay. Yeah. Amber. Oh, and now she's looking the other way. She's like, no. Hi, Amber. Hello, Sydney. How was your day at Emerald City Comic Con? Oh man, Atomic Blonde. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I, uh, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I just want some water, but it's like $4 a bottle. <laughs> oh, see, I'm, I'm like asking my mom for some and she won't even give me any. <laughs> loves to create screen-based costumes that dazzle in design that feature intricate designs. All right, first up, we have Double Dash as Megazord from the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Finishing this cosplay was a tremendous milestone achievement and appreciation goes out to everyone who does this on a regular basis. That is dedication. Kim Stone as Iron Woman from Marvel Avengers. Make some noise for Iron Woman, Kim Stone. from PVC, Chicken Wild, and Spray Foam Insulation carved into match proportions with the human torso. Joy designed the leg mechanism to move the hooves instead of needing wheels. The mechanism is cut and pieced together from metal U-bars and it works with a system that is cross-rigged to the front feet. Next we have Mei Jean cosplay as Nerva Gigant from Monster Hunter World. Yeah. That's right, if a costume could be a jack of all trades, you found it right here. The armor and props were 100% self-drafted and built from the ground up, from the bottom of the shoes to the horns on the head. The armor was made from EVA foam, hand-textured and covered with over 400 spikes. The armor is finished with hand-tooled and dyed leather pieces, and underneath you'll find a, uh, a silk and organza sewn into a custom corset, bodice, and skirt. It's been painted and decorated with hundreds of stones. The horns, shoe soles, and accessories were 3D designed and printed by her, while the other components were either hand, sculpted, or cast from resin. It is May Jean cosplay. So we have Lexi Lass as Skirmisher from Halo Reach. All individually colored and dusted with a makeup powder. There are over 6,000 hexagons covering the armor, which are all done by masking the armor with individual stickers, painting, 
We're moving all the stickers again. The Dusk Rose Creation. Decorative pieces. It took two weeks to make enough pieces to create the design that kept the spirit of the artwork. Fall Guy Cosplay is an intro from Royal Remains. This armor is primarily EVA foam that was hand patterned and sculpted using dermal, foam clay, and lightly brulee with a boutine torch. All right, JD Killzone is Bjorn Enderlin from Dragon Slayer from Under the Table. And dyed scales, real bull horns on the dragon skull helmet, an eight foot cathedral cape, which was hand dyed fabric for the fins, warble sword replica, and all of the leather is originally patterned, hand tooled, dyed, and hand sewn. All right, up next we have Dan the Man as Jedi Knight Raven. The leather armor is without a doubt the highlight of this cosplay. There are over 50 individual pieces of leather combined. Oh, cosplay and props as Count Noctilus for Warhammer, Age of Sigma. Now this cosplay is made completely out of EVA foam and foam clay. It took around 400 hours to build. That's right. It looks absolutely amazing. Please put your hands together and make some noise for 40 Below Cosplay and Rock. Please welcome to the stage a classy teacher as Jeannie the Dandelion SX model from Pushing Daisies. This is Jeannie from the television series Pushing Daisies, a cosplayer, a, a classy teacher. The dandelion headpiece consists of a felt, hat base, clear plastic nuts and bolts, straws, funnels, and white turkey feathers. Athena cosplay as Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Belle's yellow dress in a historically based style. It features six yards of hand-painted fabric and handmade ribbon roses. Put your hands together for Athena Cosplay. Right, up next, please welcome to the stage, Jewel Money as White Rabbit from White Rabbit, Alice in Wonderland. This costume is almost completely a window and shower curtain, tablecloth, and neckties. The bodies are made of men's neckties, while the red overskirt is curtains, and the underskirt is made from tablecloths. Here we have Vegas Sailor cosplay as Queen Amidala from Star Wars Prequel Trilogy. The crown was made from craft foam and Terraflex, and finally, all of the yellow embroidery, that was done by hand, with the finger calluses to prove it. This recreation of John Watson's 1978 creation of the iconic Marble King is a labor of love featuring 2,000 different embellishments. This is our shield maiden as Miles Morales from Into the Spider-Verse. This outfit was a collaboration between our shield maiden based on an illustration by Puerto Rican artist Gabriel Diaz. Since the look was based on concept art, parts such as the sleeves and skirt were free drafted without a pattern. Welcome to the stage, John Jaru as Jimmy Grimswald from Under the Table. The vest is boned corset made of brocade and silk lining. There are handmade leather accents throughout, including the hat, tie, gloves, and the spats. Here's Fairy Fingers cosplay as Queen Morelia Q. Mellar from The Rising of the Shield Hero. The opulent satin gown is embellished with ruffles, lace, and embroidery wrapped in armor and jewels. Melissa spent the lockdown learning many new skills for this cosplay, including digitizing machine embroidery, creating the resin gems, laser cutting stencils, wig styling, and armor making uh, with a combination of EVA and war bluff. Next up we have blue cosplay is Princess Zelda. The skirt is open front hoop skirt made with polyester boning and wire, and the details are all hand stenciled and hand painted. foam and warbler. Please welcome Soresco as Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Starting from the foundations and working to complete each layer before moving on to the next. It is a technique ranging from the late 1890s to 1900s. The, pot, the uh, cotton petticoat alone has over 65 yards of lace, some of uh, insert totaling over 100 hours of work. Either piece was either made using a historical pattern or drafted from a book from that time period. In third place for our armor category, 
we have Dust Bros Creations as Sandra Nalar. And second place in our armor category, we have Bald Guy Cosplay as Isra of the Royal Remains. The first place in the armor category, we have 40 Below Cosplay as Count Noctilus. Make some noise for our armor category, everybody. We have our shield maiden as Miles Morales! And in second place, we have a Staresco cosplay as Ariel! Yards and yards of fabric. It's Jewel as the White Rabbit. Alrighty, in second place overall, Fairy Fingers cosplay as Queen Rhea. This is our first place winner again, walking away with $1,000, a cartoonishly large check, a medal, and the chance to represent you at the Crown Championship of Cosplay Finals at C2E2 in Chicago. Seattle, are you ready? <laughs> then please put your hands together and make some noise for May Jean Cosplay as New Jersey. been a long day at Comic-Con. I hope you guys enjoyed the cosplay competition. There were some wonderful cosplays there. We are now heading home and we will see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be Felicity. All right, it is time for day three of Comic-Con. Obviously, I am dressed as Felicity today, and uh, this is not the wig that I was intending to use, so we're gonna see how this goes today, but this is my Joe wig slash ragtime wig, and it is very heavy, but it is the right color. So I styled this up last night, did these little curls, and hopefully it looks kind of like how I've styled hers. We've both got our caps on, and I think we are ready to go to the con, so let's go ahead and head out. City Comic Con and here's Felicity and we are going to head to the drag queen panel very soon but first let me show you what I'm wearing today.
I found Kimberly! Hey Kimberly! Kimberly's one of my patrons. It's so nice to meet you. Do a little spin. Look at that train. We don't trust YouTubers not to step all over it. Yeah, be careful today yeah, on the floor. Please give a huge round of applause for Jinx Monsoon and Ben De La Creme. Here they are. Good morning. Good evening. And good morning, evening to all of you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You look beautiful. We had little choice in the matter. You're wearing the same. <laughs> Whoa! Deeply embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go change. Have yeah. one <laughs> so you guys have been working together for a long time. We have. It's been well. We keep saying a decade. We've been saying a decade for several years, apparently. Yeah, but I think it's closer. It's almost 13 years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> An iconic duo. Yeah. What do you think the the secret sauce is to your collaboration and to your friendship? It's a mix of ketchup and mayonnaise. Mm. Um, and you had the confidence to say goodbye. I did. I had the confidence to kick him to the curb. Have you, have you always had that confidence? Was it something that you... No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, I think one thing that uh, I talk to people about, there's a lot of people who are sort of like, oh, uh, drag queens really inspire me, and the confidence you walk out uh, into the world with is very inspirational. But the reality is a huge part of what we do is go out into the world whether we feel confident or not, and the confidence follows. You know, I think that that's um, an important life thing. But going into uh, All Stars, you know, I was very conflicted about the format versus just wanting to be a part of the Olympics of drag because I'm right. passionate about the art form. Right. Um, but there was just that rare moment of opportunity where I just kept winning. <laughs> So after breaking multiple records, I was I was in the rare position to actually have my cake and eat it too and say, hey, That's I right. can win this thing, but I don't know, greedier terms. And um, as a result, I have to say, I've been much more confident in my life since. Beautiful. It was actually a big turning point. Beautiful. Yeah, my dream role is Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd. Oh. But... You bring up a great point because we're in this really privileged position as performers where we've made a name for our original work. Mm. So it allows us to be kind of um, picky. Yeah. You know, like we have such a good time doing our original work that if we were to take any break from that to do right, something right, right. scripted, it would have to be, you know, like the perfect right, thing. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing that I love about drag is it's an opportunity to really work in, I mean, drag queens are sort of self-created, self-contained things, and that's part of what I fell in love with, yeah. with some of the old school queens like Varla Jean Merman mm -hmm. and Charles Bush, and these folks who really create their own universes. That's right. And so, um, you know, as much as Jinx is an incredible actress, I mean, I find that writing and directing are such a passion for me. I think. You know, if we were to not be working on our own work, I think Jinx would step in front of the camera and I'd step behind it. Very oh, wow. Well. Like, right. You've created your own iconography. Exactly. Truly. Global. All the time, but it's really about being um, genuine to, your, to yourself and really, you know, I mean, drag is so much about a self-expression of something very, very deep. And it can be, I mean drag queen or not, I think a lot of our life's work is to get back to the state of mind we were in when we were five before everyone told us what we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I think stripping away those learned limitations is a big part of success in life, but it's a huge part of drag. And drag's a really fun way to start doing that. I mean, you can, I feel like we've both gained a lot as human beings from what drag has taught us. So um, I'd say just try to get in touch with that thing and let go of 
whatever anybody has made you believe about what that thing should be. Zach Seiler, please welcome Freddie French Jr. Woo! This is just like working together all over again. I tried to steal the Pilgrim Cross from Wing Commander. I just remembered this. It like if you pushed a button, a, a dagger shot out like a switchblade, and uh, Customs wasn't having that. So, there's a guy somewhere in France, because that's where we flew out of, that took it from me, and uh, that son of a... <laughs> that son of a gun, one day, I'll find you. So I managed to actually enter the cosplay contest this morning, so here I am. Everyone is starting to line up behind me here. I don't think I'm gonna win anything, because I made this in really quickly, but here we are, we're gonna give it a go. Cosplay to somebody who worked details, details, details on their costume that took hours and, and dedication to get it the perfect color, the perfect shape. Whitney Whimsy's cosplays as Queen Elsa. So the best group goes to Karen and Luke, Peter Pan and their shadow. But can we give a drum roll for Best in Show, please? Best in Show 2022 Emerald City Comic Con Cosplay Showcase! Lily Bean Cosplay! Oh. My name is Stan here. I know it's wrong with the not saying things on the front. Yeah, that's what I would love to check in after my first one. Look at that sparkle! Yeah. Because I was just sitting out in the lobby, I sat down, I was like, oh, God. Gorgeous. Oh, well, that was completely unexpected. I definitely did not expect to win anything at all. So exciting to win Judge's Choice again. And yeah, I feel a little bit better about myself and this cosplay now, because I thought I just threw it together. <laughs> so this is gonna be the end of the day for us. And I had such a wonderful time here at Emerald City Comic Con. Hopefully you can hear this outro. I'm just waiting right now before we head home and then we are going to head home and I'm gonna edit this video. So I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me to Emerald City Comic Con. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at LadyRebeccaFashions. 
And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, you do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!